Who's winning the Euros? America. I just wanted to show this little clip from my Twitch stream, and you'll see why in just a second. Um, up the inside of this guy, we're doing rally cross. He's deep. This is the penultimate lap now, and we're chasing down P4. Oh, one more lap to do it. One more lap to do it. We were actually in an accident with this guy on like lap three from a bad rejoin. So hoping that we can get some sweet, sweet revenge on this guy. He flings it with quite a lot more angle than me as he hits the jump, but um, I'm a bit wider. So I'm able to open it up this up a little bit more. He has to kind of create that opening for himself. And then coming towards the penult penultimate, penultimate corner. <laughs> <laughs> even even now like editing i just can't stop laughing <laughs> this is the car this is the track and this is my favorite video it looked exactly the same size length girth circumference of a pringles can maybe a bit bigger Huge shout out to Matthew who uh, watches the content. He was also in the stream. That's his car, the beautiful Bill Stein livery um, on his Porsche. And he is starting in P3 right behind us who uh, we are car number three with a 22.1, Matthew with a 22.8, and then the times just kind of taper down from there. Getting right underway, we do have somebody on our inside, uh, car number one, Loris, ahead of us. And heading towards turn one at Spa, we are going to try and send it deep and look for um, good speed cutting back. However, we do not achieve that. As a matter of fact, we do the opposite of that and basically just kill our own speed so Matthew goes ahead of us with these, these two guys behind getting a little handsy with each other and uh, I think Franz realized that that was on him so he backs out and lets car number two take that position and run away up Eau Rouge and Radion he is now directly on my tail 0.1 seconds behind me uh, and Matthew up ahead is looking to go around Loris at the same time that that is happening as they head into the braking zone. This guy behind us looking to go around the outside here. He breaks slightly late, a little bit of a lockup, and he's going to go into the dirt, allowing us to keep P3 and... Um basically relieve any of the pressure from behind us. Now, Matthew made a fantastic move at the end of that straight, so he has claimed P1. It looks like Loris is gonna look up the inside into the hairpin. Matthew taking a very wide line here to maintain track position and maintain a decent exit all of the way out. It looks like he is going to keep that position, and that little fighting from them is actually going to allow me to catch slightly up about half of a second behind Loris at the moment. As we head into Puan for the first time, taking a look at the gap behind, Franz is coming in here at about seven tenths, eight tenths, and then quickly dropping off significantly. So definitely, it looks like he sent it in a bit too hot there and then um, probably lost some time recovering. A few cars back, car number one looking to ship it <laughs> through this corner. Um, well avoided by car number eight there and well avoided by car number one too, to realize that he was going too fast and kind of aim to not hit anybody so on good on both of those cars they're unfortunate for car number one who has ended ended in the wall and i think his race is probably over with that damage just a few corners left on the first lap and if you know spa you know that there is a massive overtaking opportunity just ahead of us into the bus stop that is the final corner on this layout of the track and it looks like Loris is in a pretty prime position, two tenths behind um, Matthew. We go extremely wide through there, which is going to kind of remove us from the situation. Loris plays it safe though, breaks early. He's gonna stay behind Matthew and we all make it through here safely. And I think uh, actually everybody on the track made it through there safely, save for um, car number one who ran into the wall. So pretty astonishing sight there. Loris completely cutting, I think that was Radion at the top. That gives you a massive slowdown. It, it says it's like two seconds or three seconds, but really you end up losing about five. And you can see him dropping down the order behind us. Matthew giving us a little wiggle. We wiggle back for him. And this was just kind of a cool moment. He was in the stream with us as we were driving this race and to be P1 and P2 in this situation was just very interesting. Uh, this is week 13 and there's only seven laps to this race. So it's a very short one. And um, skipping ahead to lap three, the end of lap three, the situation is pretty similar. We're chasing Matthew down, Franz still behind us and uh, Yang behind him. Heading towards the final chicane of the track, looking up the inside, but uh, not really looking for a move, just trying to place my car in his mirror and distract him as much as I can. Onto the grid and um, coming across to start lap number four, we are 0.3 seconds behind Matthew. So if we keep this gap, we should be able to look for a move 
at the end of the Kimmel straight, and that's kind of my focus at the moment. Just stay about four, three to four tenths behind him. We get a decent run through here as well. It seems he goes slightly wide, and uh, we have a big gap behind us too, so we're not really worried about any pressure. The gap down to 0.2 seconds. They did change the tire model for this car this season, so you can't take a Rouge and Radion exactly the same way you used to. Slight changes, a slight lift. I, I don't know if it's necessary to lift, but it feels so much more dangerous not to lift now than it did before the tire model update. So he is defending the inside at the end of the Kimmel. We're going to look to go around the outside, break as late as we can, and honestly, we broke a little bit too late here, going wide and kind of botching our chances however he does afford space and that's not going to give me the advantage here but it forces him into a narrow line and I think just too much angle mixed with clipping that curb gets his car super loose and we're able to scoot around the outside very well done by him to catch the car I'm gonna take a look back at that just barely lifts that inside tire as he's turning and manages to kind of drift it through the dirt and keep it facing the right way I think he only lost about three or four tenths there so that could have been much much worse for him as we make our way around that hairpin um, and down towards Puan. We are separating ourselves from Matthew now. We've got him about 1.2 seconds behind, but Matthew from this point on isn't really going to be the threat. Taking a look at the relative, you see the guy behind Franz. That is the car number eight of Yang, and he is going to overtake Franz there. And even though this is a sh pretty short race, and I am at the lead with, uh, we only have three laps left, he is going to prove to be the, uh, proved to be the, the thorn in my side towards the end of this race. This is the overtake that he just had on Franz, a pretty textbook overtake on Spa, getting a good run through there and towards Puan, you move to the inside. Franz knows that this guy is fast and he's gonna back out and give him that position for uh, not really any drama there. He does go slightly wide there, but I mean, Nothing that's going to lose him any substantial amount of time. And we only have Matthew between the two of us as a buffer now. A few laps later, lap number five, and Matthew will um, politely move aside for Yang. This was very kind of Matthew. He did not have to do that, but that's just the type of gentleman that he is. So now with nobody between us and two laps remaining, we're going to skip ahead to the final lap. The gap has completely vanished behind us. He is 0.6 seconds. And like I said earlier, you know, if you're about 0.3 0.4 sec seconds uh, behind at the top of Orusian Radion, you can really look to make a move around the outside of the Kimmel Straight, and currently he is just slightly over half of a second. However, he is soaking up the slipstream, so he's kind of teetering, and he's going to have an advantage speed-wise over us already. And this was by far the bravest that I took Orusian Radion this entire race. Uh, it was still not enough to pull away from him. He is about 0.4 seconds behind us. So I'm doing a little bit of swerving just to try and break the toe as much as I can. It is the final lap. I'm in the lead. He's 0.3 seconds by the end of the Kimmel straight. And honestly, that is okay with me. I just need to grow that gap before we get to that final chicane. Because if we get to that straight on the final chicane and he's 0.3 seconds behind, he is going to have the opportunity to look for a move. So doing all that I can here to push through the infield. Down through the hairpin, he takes a very early first apex with slightly too much speed and that's going to basically force him to completely miss his second apex, which will open up the gap ever so slightly. We've got it to about half of a second now, which is perfect. I need to keep it there. I run off track using all of that runoff, a strategic off track there to keep my speed up as high as I possibly can through Puan, really opting for just a high minimum speed here and not looking for the greatest angle or the greatest line overall. Do, do manage to keep just a slight bit of oversteer, which I believe is optimal through that corner. We've got him at 0.3 seconds behind us still. Want to get the right tire up on this curb to help us pull, pull us around and uh, braking a lot earlier than you would think here still managed to understeer off of that curb and have to kind of correct it by slamming the throttle to get slightly more rotation definitely not the best way to take that corner but in this instance it's going to work for us we've got him 0.4 seconds behind us but it's not going to stay there for long he does have the slipstream and we are basically on to the straight i mean there's one more corner before the um before the chicane, but it's not really all that much of a corner, so he's going to be soaking up the slipstream, closing the gap, and probably put himself in a position to make a move into the chicane, which means I am going to stay defensive, hug the right side of the track here. He moves to the outside, and I drift across the track ever so slightly. He ends up locking up his tires, thank God, and I am able to scoot away through there safely. The, he, the gap opens up behind, and we come across the line, for P1 in week 13. This is our first official race with the new tire model, and we are going to celebrate by running into the wall, probably traumatizing all, all the kids in the crowd, but um, that's just what winners do. And yeah, our car is totally toast at this point. Matthew comes across the line a few positions behind us, sees us, and seems to try to come to our aid, but we vanish before he can get there. So I just want you to know that I appreciate that. Uh, that you, you 
came to check on me. Here are the results. We crossed the line in P1. Yang managed to hold P2. Matthew came across in P5 there, and uh, we gained 60 I rating for that. Lost a little bit of safety rating, but I am a-okay with that. If you want to check anything else, feel free to pause and look at anything here. He was um, he was definitely faster than me. His, his best lap was better than my best lap of that session. If you guys enjoyed this and want to support me, check out my channel, watch some videos. It helps me a absolute fucking dick ton.